with the UF Entomology and Nematology Department. I want to welcome you. I'm Dr. Rebecca Baldwin. I'm the Undergraduate Coordinator and Associate Professor. We're going to take a tour and see the wonderful world of insects. Our next stop on our entomology tour is going to be the Entomology Education and Outreach Lab. And I'm Dr. Rebecca Baldwin and we're going to introduce you now to some of our live arthropods we have in our petting zoo. So I'm going to introduce you to my buggy friend. And so this is Jennifer Stanley. Jennifer is a master's student here at the University of Florida. So she came here to study all about bugs. And can you guess what her favorite type of bug is? She loves honeybees. So you'll get a chance to see Jennifer introduce herself um, on one of our other stops. So let's take a look at some of our critters that we have here. So you'll notice we keep our critters in some cages and you might actually have some pet arthropods of your own. I don't know if you realize this, but about 75% of all animals on planet Earth are arthropods and that includes all of the insects. Now, I wonder if you can tell me what makes an insect different from other animals. Well, insects have three body segments, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Other arthropods don't have that same makeup, but they do have an exoskeleton. So I'm going to start off showing you an arthropod that's known as a scorpion. Now scorpions are closely related to spiders, so do you know how many legs a spider has? Hmm. Well, spiders have eight legs. And so in our scorpion here, it has eight legs, but it has a mouth that's adapted to be able to grab food. And that mouth looks like claws that are called pedipalps. So these claws are actually part of its jaw. So this is Scorpio. He's an Asian forest scorpion, and these actually make pretty nice pets. Now, Scorpio is a predator, so he's going to eat live prey. So we feed Scorpio typically crickets because they're easy for us to get at a pet store. So I'm going to pick up Scorpio very gently. If you notice, I'm going to pick him up underneath so his feet always have something to hang on to. And that way he doesn't get scared that I'm going to drop him. So there you can see those large pedipalps. And if you look closely, you can see that there are teeth inside of there. Scorpio uses those to grab its food and then pull it apart. And the, mouths are, the mouth is actually right here underneath the head. If you can look carefully, you can see some golden hairs. Those are called chelicera. They have fang-like mouths, much like a spider. And they'll use those to break up the food and then eat. If you count, you can see it's got eight legs, four on each side. One, two, three, four, and then four more on the other side. Now, most of you were wondering why he's not stinging me. So you can look at the tail. The very tip of the tail does have venom glands and it has a nice big stinger. Every now and then, Scorpio will sting. Now he's trying to look, scorpions don't like the daylight, and so he's looking for a nice dark place to hide. So I'll use my hands kind of like a treadmill to keep him moving so that he can keep his feet on solid ground. Something really interesting about scorpions, this is gonna blow your mind, is that they have little pits in their exoskeleton. So the light that they reflect to us looks dark. So it looks like it's black. At nighttime, they hide in cracks and crevices to protect themselves from the sunshine, and they go out at nighttime in order to hunt. Well, at nighttime, the moon comes out, and the moon shines ultraviolet rays that we can't see very well with our eyes, but the scorpions can actually see through their skin. Researchers in Arizona have found that when they reflect those rays, they know that they're exposed. So they go out on a hunting trip looking for their crickets and looking for their insects to eat, they can tell if they're hidden or not. So I'm gonna show you really quickly what happens when we turn on a black light. Look at that. The scorpion actually reflects the UV rays right back at us and it looks like it's glowing. If you look right in the top of its head, you can see its eyes. Well, scorpions don't have very good eyesight, so they depend on small hairs on their body in order to be able to detect vibrations. They also have a comb underneath so they can sense even small vibrations of an insect on the ground. So aren't you ready to go hunting with our scorpion? All right, so we all love bugs around here and we have an opportunity to give them a pet. Now, whenever you pet an arthropod, you wanna be very careful that you're not putting yourself or the arthropod in danger. So Ms. Kelsey, would you like to give Scorpio a pet? Would, yes. So she's taking one finger and she's giving it a gentle touch. And you know what? Miss Kelsey is so brave, she's gonna get an I Touched a Scorpion sticker. So now we're gonna take our, a look at our friend Rose. So Rose is a Chilean rose hair tarantula. Do any of you knew, know how long a tarantula can live? 
kind of interesting because having a pet tarantula really is a long-term commitment. So a male tarantula can live to be about eight to 10 years old and females can live to be 25 or 30. Can you believe that? That's older than you are. So we're gonna take a look and you can see how hairy she is. So tarantulas are very sensitive to vibration, and so you have to be careful when handling them. Now here in the state of Florida, we don't have any native tarantulas, so you won't find these in the wild. You have to find these at a pet store to have them if you want them as a pet. So Chilean rose hairs are native to the country of Chile, and I'm gonna see if I can pick her up with one hand. I'm gonna set down her cage. And so how you can see how she moves all of her legs and she wants to feel for edges. So see, she's looking for a place to walk. So I'm gonna put my hand down to let her feel my hand and she'll walk right onto my hand. Now spiders are really interesting. On their abdomen, no, we talked about insects having a head, thorax, and abdomen. Spiders only have two segments. So their head and thorax are combined and then they have a big abdomen where all of their organs are. Now these two little fuzzy things on the back of the abdomen are spinnerets and so she'll actually produce silk. And so there'll be silk threads that come out of the spinnerets. So when she gets really nervous, you can see her starting to, to produce silk. Just in case she was, was to fall, she tries to catch herself with some of that silk. Mm -hmm. Now spiders also have claws. So they have tarsal claws on the tip of every one of their legs. That gives them the ability to crawl up surfaces like trees. Now, if you want to see where the eyes are, just like the scorpion, the tarantula eyes are on top of their head. And just like the scorpion, they also have chelicera. They have fang-like mouth parts. Now, when a tarantula molts, like all arthropods molt their exoskeleton, even the fangs molt. So I'll show you one of Rose's exoskeletons where she molted this past summer. Now, do you remember how many legs an arthropod has? Well, this particular arthropod is a spider. It's an arachnid, so it's going to have eight legs. And if you count carefully, you might see 10. And you're like, well, hey, Dr. Baldwin, why does it have 10 legs? Well, you know how the scorpion had the pedipalps that were part of its mouth? Spiders do too. So what looks like these short pair of legs are actually part of its mouth. And they use that to help bring food right into their mouth when they get ready to eat. These are also predators and so will hunt insects. So if you decide to have a tarantula as a pet, remember it's a long-term commitment. You have to be very gentle with them. If they were to fall, they can break and, you, and can actually ble bleed out. And you have to feed them live insects like crickets. So you have to have live food for them. Have you ever looked in your yard and found one of these on a fence post or hanging on a tree? Many of you call these a cicada shell or a locust shell, and they're so amazing to look at carefully. So there was actually an insect living underground for up to 17 years, feeding on tree sap, and they crawl to the surface using these digging legs. They crawl up a tree, they split open their, their back, and then they fly away in order to mate and lay eggs for the next generation. You might actually hear them singing. Have you ever heard cicada songs in the late summer evenings just as the sun's going down? Well, all arthropods molt their exoskeleton. And we took a look at our friend Rosie, who is a tarantula. So I wanted to show you one of Rosie's molts. So this is the exoskeleton from, from Rosie. Some people would say, oh, that's just a dead tarantula, but it's not. It's her old clothes. Just like when you grow, you have to get larger shoes and larger clothes, arthropods do the same thing. Spiders actually molt throughout their lives. And if you look, you can see the holes where all of her legs were located. So the top of her cephalothorax popped off and all of her legs came out. Now, if you watch a tarantula molt, they typically will flip over on their back and push their exoskeleton up to the top. Take a look at that. Even their fangs molt. So our next friend that we're going to meet is called a vinegaroon. So this is Vinny vinegaroon. These are actually native to Florida and this is another arachnid, eight legs. You're like, well, hold on. What are these long things in the front? Well, insects have antenna on their legs and some arachnids like this vinegaroon have their front legs modified so they can use it like antenna. So they feel around their environment and they'll actually use that to tickle out an insect and make it jump right into its mouth. And just like the scorpion we saw earlier, it has huge petty palps and it builds a burrow into the sand and uses its head to plug the top of the burrow so it can protect itself with those big teeth in the petty palps. Now something cool about this vinegaroon that you can find native to Florida and Arizona 
is that they have glands on their abdomen that can produce vinegar. So acetic acid, wouldn't it be cool if you could shoot acid at your enemies? So it smells just like vinegar. So it makes you think you're dying Easter eggs when you're around them because they'll use that as a defense if any predator like a bird or a lizard tries to, to take it out. So this is our friend, Vinny the Vinegar Rune. All right, all right, kids, wait till you find what I'm gonna get out right now. I'm gonna get out a cockroach, okay? But this isn't just any cockroach. It's like a super large cockroach and it actually makes sounds. But they're totally harmless, they're safe. And so I think you're gonna think that it's really a cool thing to see. We got our little Charlie the cockroach. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> and if I squeeze it, usually they make a sound. And they actually, they don't breathe like we do with a lung. But they have something called, little openings on their side called spiracles. And that's how they actually breathe. And this one's a feisty one. But you can see, look how cute it is. It's not hurting me. Okay, so let me flip them over so that you can see. You can see our head. We've got six legs. We've got our antenna. And we're actually quite feisty also. We don't want to be on our back. And this one's a quiet one. But it's pretty cute. And it's actually got like little horns on its head. Can you see it there? Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is something called a best beetle. And these little things are very amazing. And what's amazing about them is they actually have almost like a vocabulary where they can communicate amongst themselves. And they have a, such a high vocabulary, they have 17 different sounds that they can make. And what's great about them is they're actually very beneficial for the environment in that they eat wood, but they only eat wood that's actually rotting. So they're not gonna be, even they might look a little scary or intimidating, but they're perfectly harmless and they're very good for the environment as they help break down wood and eat wood. Okay, so that beetle that I just told you about, actually can, since I said it eats wood, rotted wood, it can actually be found in wood and it's a beetle that's native here to Florida. So you can see how we keep these beetles here. They're actually a cool pet that you can keep quite easily and all you have to feed them is wood. All right, did you know that some insects could actually infest your food? And we call these stored product pests. And here we have a cracker that you can see has been damaged. There are tiny beetles that are actually eating holes in this cracker. And we have to be careful whenever farmers harvest their food that the insects don't get into that food after harvest or by the time they get to your grocery store or even before they get to your pantry. So we call these stored product pests or stored food pests. Another one that you may see actually people that have pet lizards and, and birds will feed these to them. Do you know what these are? You may have seen these before. These are called mealworms and they're M-E-A-L because they can infest things like cornmeal. So these are mealworms and I'm sure you've probably learned in school before about holometabolous development or complete metamorphosis. Like a butterfly goes through egg, larva, pupa, and adult, so do beetles. So this is a beetle adult, and that beetle will lay eggs. Those eggs will hatch into larva, and then those larva molt their exoskeletons until they become larger and larger, and then they pupate and become an adult. Take a look at this one. This one has just molted. Can you see the difference in the color? One is much lighter than the other. That's because this one is very, very soft. In a few hours, it'll tan and become dark like this one and be able to move around like normal and be able to hunt for food. Remember, these can be stored food pests and so you have to be careful to keep them out of your pet feed and out of the food in your pantry. Something else you might not be aware of is how insect products are used in the foods that you normally eat. Did you know that insects such as these scale insects called cochineal scales, create this beautiful red dye that's used in everything from fabric to food to even the lip gloss. So they have a bright red coloration that can be used to color lots of things. Have you ever had strawberry nerds? Well, strawberry nerds get their beautiful pink color from insects. Our strawberry yogurt. So many dairy products can even be colored. Even some of the sausage and meats that you eat benefit from having the color from these cochineal scales. Another type of scale insect makes a resinous secretion that we call confectioner's glaze. So many of the candies, maybe you have some junior mints, 
they are covered in a secretion from an insect. So check out the ingredients and see, you might see beeswax, you might see confectioner's glaze, or you might see something called carmine or cochineal. Now if you want to eat some insects, if you go to an Asian food market, you can actually buy silkworm pupa that you can cook up and add to your salad. There are cookbooks out there that you can learn how to eat a bug. Around the world, people depend on insects for all kinds of protein in their diet. So things from mealworms to crickets, you can buy all kinds of insects. And yes, in some Asian countries, they do eat scorpions. So give it a chance. When you have an opportunity, try a bug. So many of you like to explore your backyards. Maybe you can go out and find some of those best beetles. Well, insects have lots and lots of diversity from around the world. So you can see the different shapes and the different sizes. If you want to learn more about insects, you can contact your local county extension office and see if they have an entomology team. 4-Hers can actually compete in an insectathon competition every January here at the University of Florida where you can create your very own insect collection that you can present for awards and even scholarships. Now, you may wonder how I got interested in entomology. Well, when I was 10 years old, my county extension agent called my house and asked my parents if I would be interested in learning more about insects. So I got to visit the entomology department, look at insects, and compete in insect collection competitions. Now I teach other people all about insects. So please contact your county extension agent and find out if there's an entomology team you can be a part of.